This is modern day Greenland, but let's go back to the year 1400 where you can visit the very edge of the known world. See the last outpost of Christianity. Hunt wild walrus until they all disappear. Witness your best friend freeze to death. And it seems like no one really cares about you. Welcome to Norse Greenland in the year 1400. This is the North Atlantic, here are the lands of the Kalmar Union, and here are the Viking settlements of Greenland. So how did Greenland get colonised in the first place? Meet Eric the Red. Name that, either for his beautiful red hair, or his really angry temper. In the year 960, Eric the Red's father murdered some people, forcing his family to flee Norway. They ended up in Iceland. 20 years later, like his father before, Eric got into an argument with a neighbour, which ended in murder. Two years after that, Eric got into another argument over some mythical logs, and that ended, surprisingly, in murder. Being left with no choice, Eric had to be banished for three years. So what do you do with all that time? There was always rumours about ships getting blown off course and coming across strange lands in the west. Eric thought to himself, hmm, that could be interesting. So his voyage of discovery began. Now the area of water to the west of Iceland is today called the Denmark Strait. It's notorious for waves, icebergs and fog. So a normal Viking longship wouldn't do. Eric used a heavier ship called a Nar. He set sail and eventually found land. But what do you call this new discovery? A desolate wasteland of ice and snow? So Eric had a long think and decided to... Ah, screw it. Just lie and call it Greenland. Make it sound really, really, really good for everyone. After three years, he was back in Iceland, trying to convince everyone about how amazing Greenland was, with gold, palm trees, free beer, two-for-one cinema tickets and chocolate. It worked. Plus, Iceland kind of sucks at this point in history. All the trees had been chopped down, and the soil quality was generally really poor. So in 986, 25 ships and 500 settlers set sail for Greenland. Only 14 arrived. They were expecting this, but got this. But the Vikings are hardy people, and okay, life was hard, but over time they made it work. So where did it all go wrong? Well, the main bulk of the colonies' trade was walrus ivory, which was shipped all over Europe. But when Europe discovered cheaper and better alternatives, overnight the Greenland economy crashed. Add on to that the Little Ice Age, where temperatures plummeted, and the odd fight with local Inuits, and don't forget, outbreaks of plague. Um, yeah, it's a total mystery why the Greenland Vikings disappeared. So, what to see in Norse Greenland? There's the cathedral, where bishops are still appointed by Rome, even if mail takes ages to arrive. There's Eric's Fjord, named after you-know-who, and you can even go visit his very own house. Okay, so what to see outside of Norse Greenland? Well, there's actually land beyond Greenland. So go back to the year 1020, leave Greenland behind and follow the footsteps of Leif Erikson. He's Eric the Red's son. Explore the new lands of Heluland, Markland and Vinland. See pristine forests, exotic strange animals, meet the natives and feel free to settle down and build a village or two. Now if you think about it, these new lands together were colonies of Greenland, which was a colony of Iceland, which was a colony of Norway. Yeah, that's a bit confusing. After a while, things don't exactly go to plan. Then you'll have to abandon your settlement and head back to Greenland. So what are the scores for Norse Greenland? Northern Lights and Icebergs, it's getting a one. So if you like being cold, I mean really, really cold, think hunting walrus sounds like fun, but in the end, everyone will probably be dead soon, then Norse Greenland is the place for you.